Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Monday, February 15th, 2021. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I am delighted that you are part of my life as well. February 15th today uh, is a national holiday here in the United States. It is George Washington's birthday. Uh, that's when we celebrate George Washington's birthday. Um, often called President's Day, although um, it's not officially called President's Day, but a lot of stores uh, and retail outlets have combined Lincoln's birthday and Washington's birthday to make it one. But officially, it is George Washington's birthday today, and it is a, uh, a national holiday. It's also Susan B. Anthony's birthday today. Susan B. Anthony was uh, the woman who is uh, renowned for sewing, hand sewing the first uh, American flag with stars and stripes. And uh, so she's uh, celebrated today. That's a pretty big day for the United States of America as we celebrate those two icons. Uh, yesterday was a holiday and I did not mention it at all at church. I, afterwards, I felt so silly not having mentioned Valentine's Day at all yesterday. So happy Valentine's Day a day late. Uh, to all of you. Actually, Karina and I celebrate Valentine's Day a day late. Um, we've always done that, uh, partially for frugality reasons. It's very difficult to get um, get restaurant reservations on Valentine's Day or easy to get it on the day after. Um, all the candies and stuff are are 50% off the next day. So partly for frugality reasons, but partly because we've just always been kind of contrary, not wanting to celebrate what everybody else is celebrating at the time when they're celebrating it. So we've always celebrated the day after Valentine's Day. And so that's uh, that's our day today. So um, happy Valentine's Day to you. And we call it Oaf Day. So happy Oaf Day to me and Karina. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yesterday I didn't even mention it because honestly I was so fixated on two things. One was our technical difficulties that we had at the service yesterday that prevented us from having computer slides up on the screen. And uh, the other one was I knew I wanted to talk about the Ravi Zacharias uh, scandal. And uh, I was worried about that and thinking about how I was going to say that. So those two things were in my head and it kind of drove out Valentine's Day. So. Anyway, I hope you forgive me. <laughs> um, I talked yesterday, uh, we, we talked out of uh, 1 John chapter 1 and all the way up to chapter 2, verse 6. And we talked about a number of things. Um, but one of the key things is uh, this idea that, uh, that came out in the opening passage as well from Jeremiah 17, 9. Jeremiah 17, 9 says this, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Uh, it's an interesting passage to talk about on Valentine's Day and, and or Oaf Day, uh, but it's true, right? Uh, I mean, this is one of those key truths that the where the Bible cuts across the grain of what our culture teaches and um, and in a way that's very truthful, and it's much more truthful than what our culture tells us. And our culture tells us that we need to follow our heart, right? The heart always knows, the heart what knows what it wants. You gotta follow your heart, always listen to your heart, the heart knows. Well, the truth is, our hearts have things that they want, sure, um, and our hearts will, will twist facts our hearts will twist our beliefs, our hearts will twist our faith in order to get what it wants, right? Uh, one of my mentors, uh, I went to my mentors once when I was in my previous church, I, I was frustrated with something that somebody was doing and I couldn't understand this person's too smart to, this person knows the Lord, this person is saved. Why is this person doing this thing? And, and my mentor said to me, um, People do what they do because they want what they want. That's very profound, right? People do what they do because they want what they want. And, and we don't always want what's good. We don't always want what's right. We don't always want what will be best for us and for the other people around us. 
Sometimes we want things that are devastating. Sometimes we want things that it will destroy our lives. Um, that's uh, the way that addictions work, right? Addictions work by reprogramming your brain uh, to want something uh, more than you want the good things in your life. Uh, addictions turn something that's ostensibly a good thing into a totally mind-dominating thing so that you're willing to give up every other good thing in order to get that one thing and so that good thing becomes a bad thing uh, by, and destroys your life. Uh, wanting alcohol, wanting gambling, wanting pornography, wanting cigarettes, wanting drugs. Uh, addictions reprogram your brain so that what you want is not what's good for you. Uh, this is why affairs happen oftentimes, right? Uh, you are married and, and you have a, a spouse that you love, but, but your heart begins to want someone else for some reason. And so you pursue what you want rather than what's right. Um, or this is, this is the way greed works, right? God has given you what you, what you have. God's given you what you need. God's surrounded you with brothers and sisters in Christ who can help you in areas of, that you have still further needs. Um, and yet you see something that someone else has and you envy it, or you uh, desire more and more and more. And your heart convinces you somehow that this is the right thing to do. Um, you deserve this, right? Uh, well, your your family isn't taking care of you. Yeah. Well, well, your wife isn't uh, isn't enough. She doesn't love you enough. She's not affectionate enough. So you deserve this affair. You need this affair. You're going to you're going to um, explode if you don't. You deserve to be loved. Doesn't this other person love you? They make you feel good, right? Or, yeah, I know that you have everything that you need, but, but boy, wouldn't a little bit more money be better? There's, there's still difficulties in your life. Maybe, maybe just a little bit more will help you across that finish line. And then you'll, then you'll finally be happy, right? Uh, the heart is deceitful above all things. When, when we're told by our culture to follow our heart, the heart knows what it wants. Uh, no, no, <laughs> uh, we have to follow scripture. We have to follow the commands of Jesus. Uh, our hearts need to be sifted. Our hearts need to be tested. Our hearts need to be fixed. Our hearts are, as the passage says, desperately sick. Our hearts need to be healed. We need to be, our hearts need to be trained so that we want what's good for us. Our hearts need to be trained so that we want uh, what God wants for us. Uh, it's good and wonderful and amazing when what you want is what God wants for you. It, it's good and wonderful and amazing if, if what you want is, is what God has already given you. That's where contentment comes. It's good and wonderful and amazing if what you want is what's good for you because it leads to a good, solid, a uh, healthy life. And the Christian, the journey of Christian discipleship is in one, in one sense, learning to want the things that God wants you to want. Training your heart so that you silence the deceitfulness of the heart and listen to the truthfulness of what God has in store for us. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Well, the Lord can understand it. The Lord can understand it because he made our hearts. The Lord can understand it because he knows how our hearts have been wrecked by sin. And the Lord can understand it because he came into this world through, as Jesus Christ, uh, God came into this world to save us from our sins, to, to cleanse our hearts and to make us new. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you that you love us so much that you don't give us everything our hearts desire. Thank you that you love us so much that you don't let us go down the road every day of, of what we would rather do. But Lord, you help us and you guide us and you, you share, you sh shape our ways, Lord, you show us the way to go. God, I pray that you would bless each person within the sound of my voice today. 
Help them, Lord, to understand the deceitfulness of their own hearts. Help me to understand the deceitfulness of my heart so that we might submit our hearts to you for correction, for training, for healing, for fixing, Lord. And Lord, our, our hearts are sometimes broken by the deceitfulness of others. Our hearts are sometimes broken because what other people want is not us. Or what other people want is not, uh, has mistreated us because of what they want. Lord, I, I pray that you would help us to heal in our brokenness of our hearts, help us to forgive uh, when others uh, lash out in the brokenness of their hearts. Lord, you are the great physician and you are operating a hospital for broken hearts. Lord, I pray that you would help each of us to, uh, to heal, to grow, to learn, and, and to want the right things, especially to want you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, I had a quote. <laughs> Here's a quote from Ivan Turgenev. He's a Russian novelist. Ivan, Tur I, Ivan Turgenev said, I do not know what the heart of a bad man is like, but I do know what the heart of a good man is like, and it is terrible. I don't know what the heart of a bad man is like, but I do know what the heart of a good man is like, and it's terrible. Uh, amen to that, Ivan. <laughs> amen to that. All right, well, have a great day today. Uh, today's a day off for me because it's uh, George Russian's birthday. It's an office holiday, so office is closed. I'm not in the office. I'm at home. Uh, so I hope you have a great uh, George Washington's birthday, President's Day holiday, and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.